Welcome to my room. My name is Martin Wimpress. Uh, this is where I've been staying in for Og Camp Europe. Uh, Og Camp Europe, UbuCon Europe 2018. Uh, and I'm just going to give a quick run through of some of the new stuff that's in uh, Ubuntu Mate 1804. Uh, and this laptop, although I'm recording in full HD, is actually a 4K uh, capable uh, device. And one of the new features in um, Ubuntu Mate 1804 is the fact that we now have full uh, high DPI support. So I've got a screenshot here that you can see now, and this is what <clears throat> a 4K screen looks like when it's um, scaled up, when everything's pixel doubled, and you get this nice crisp um, layout and everything's readable. And if I switch to the unscaled variant, these are the same applications open at the same resolution when you don't have high DPI enabled. And as you can see, you can't make out the date and time. You can't see the menu, the indicators are tiny, and you really have to squint at the display. So hopefully, those two screenshots, as I switch between them, you can appreciate the difference in what high DPI means. And this is enabled and detected by default. So if you've got a display that's high DPI capable, Ubuntu Mate will turn that on at different parts of the boot process. So the Plymouth bootloader, the login manager, and the desktop itself. And you can override that should you want to. In this case here, where I expressly wanted to turn it off and set my screen to 1080p. So that's high DPI, it's a standout feature and uh, I think this will be popular over the lifetime of the LTS. So some of the other new features, uh, well, let's start with the most important. Everybody loves background images. So we've updated the artwork in Ubuntu Mate 1804. We had used the upstream background images for some time. You can see the selection there on the screen now. And uh, I'll just run through some of those quickly. So we've just got some nice um, Digital photographs, they come from Unsplash, so these are freely licensed images. And then in addition to these digital photographs, we've also got a few uh, abstract pieces as well that have come from our own team. So hopefully something for everyone there with a little bit touch of quality. <clears throat> One of the things that Ubuntu Mate is uh, well known for is its welcome screen. Um, so if you've not seen that before, we have uh, an introductory welcome screen. <clears throat> now I'm going to start this for the first time on a computer that was recently installed uh, and it'll do something different. So you'll see now it's not displaying the usual welcome screen. It's say, hey, could you help improve Ubuntu Mate? And this is a new feature that's available in uh, Ubuntu 1804 and Ubuntu Mate 1804 where when you install the OS or you upgrade from a previous version to 1804, it will now capture some system information about the computer. And then you can choose whether you want to submit that information to uh, the Ubuntu project to help us understand the hardware and the devices that Ubuntu is running on. And more importantly, the languages where uh, people are using Ubuntu on. Um, because it, it could be that uh, we, we need to uh, invest work in translations for languages that aren't well supported. So uh, there's three buttons here, uh, preview data, uh, send the telemetry and do not send the telemetry. So we'll just click preview at the moment uh, and I'll scroll down here so you can see, in fact let's make this nice and big. So you can see here, you can see I'm running Ubuntu 1804, you can see the make and model of my computer and the BIOS version, what processor I have, um, what GPU I have, uh, what disk partitions I have, some of the options I chose during the installation. So uh, did I choose to have auto login enabled? Have I used the live patch service for the kernel? Um, what's, how many screens have I got and what resolution are they? And you'll notice as you go down here, the only information that's exposed with regards to your location is the time zone region that you chose during the install process. So for me it says Europe, London, um, and that's as close as, as your location information will go. And you'll notice throughout the rest of this information there's nothing in here that uniquely identifies your computer or you. There's no MAC addresses, there's no IP addresses, that sort of thing. So I'm just going to, uh, well now let's resize the window back to something sensible, and I'm just going to click the send telemetry button. And there we go, the telemetry sent. And that's the only time you'll see it. I encourage people to, do, to send that data because it will be extremely useful for us making decisions. For example, for the Ubuntu Mate project, we still make 32-bit Intel images and 64-bit Intel images. And I'd love to know how many of those users really require those images. 
Anecdotally, we think about 10% of the Ubuntu Mate users are running the 32-bit Intel users, but what we don't know is how many of those people could, in fact, be running the 64-bit images. So, so do we need to keep providing them, or just people using them out of habit? So that's something I'd really like to, to understand. So this is the welcome screen that most people will have seen before if you've used Ubuntu Mate in the last uh, few years. Um, it hasn't changed much since the 1710 release. It has changed a lot over time, over since 1604. Uh, this is still what we consider within the team the old version of Ubuntu Mate Welcome and the old version of the software boutique. We've made a few changes. You will have seen one that just now, the telemetry. Um, and we've also added another new feature, which is this browser selection. So I'll just bring that up here. Um, I feel that... Um, the choice of browser is a, a real personal choice and so we've got the six most common browsers that are available for Linux here. We ship Firefox by default but should you want to use a different browser then that's a one click install away and you can even specify which is the default browser through this um, user interface. So we have given the software boutique a little bit of a refresh. Uh, we've removed some applications. Uh, there are some applications that are no lo longer available anymore or not compatible um, or unmaintained and not supported. So if you, uh, if you click the little news uh, icon here for the Software Boutique, you can see the versions of Software Boutique and the changes that we made in each release. So you can see uh, Google Earth, that's uh, a relatively new addition. Um, We've updated GCompre, which is an educational set for um, preschoolers. Um, I know my daughter loved that when she was younger. Uh, and we've added um, the Google Music Manager, so you can upload your music to the Google Play services. And we've also added a player for that. So you've got some choices now with Spotify and Google Play. And then we ship Rhythmbox by default. So um, there's plenty of options for music players. And the... Uh, you're probably familiar with the categorizations we have here and you can go through, pick out the games you want, pick out the tools for uh, internet connectivity and there's a search. Those of you not familiar with Welcome, it's a, a, a curated list. In fact, if I go back to the, uh, the introductory screen here and you can see the text that's displayed, it points out that this is not, not the whole archive of software. This is a curated list. At the moment, it's about 120 applications. And the idea is that these are uh, one application to perform a particular task, and it's the best software that's available for the Linux platform to do it. It also has the capability to reach outside of the Ubuntu archives. So in the browser selection, you will have seen all of those browsers um, that aren't in the archive, like Google Chrome and Brave and Vivaldi. And there's some other things in the software boutique um, that we list. So if we go to programming, uh, Atom, for example, uh, comes from Atom directly. And also uh, at the other end of the spectrum, we've got Microsoft Visual Code. So you'll find software in here that's a, a click away for installing, um, but reaches beyond what's available just uh, in the apt archive. Another feature that Ubuntu Mate users will be familiar with is the Mate Tweak tool. Now, <clears throat> I just pressed the super key then, and we're exposing a new feature. In fact, two new features. The first is, I'm using the default layout here right now, <clears throat> which doesn't have applications, applications, places, and system in it, as it has done for many years. You'll now notice it just has a menu, and this is the familiar desktop layout. And we've, we've removed the Applications Places system and replaced it with Brisk Menu, which, uh, as I press the super key, you can see it brings up a, a launcher, and that's searchable. So if I want to run Ubuntu Mate Tweak, I can just start typing the name of the application and hit Return, and that launches the application for me. So the reason that we've made that, that change to the default uh, desktop layout is because we feel that this 1804 release is going to get tried out by lots of people coming to um, a book coming back to Ubuntu, uh, people who are displaced because Unity 7 is no longer available and might be trying out all of the Ubuntu flavors to find you know, their new home within the, uh, the Ubuntu project. Um, and the super key does something useful on all the other platforms and we felt that, that that was a feature that needed to be a useful button every time you touch it, it, it does something worthwhile. 
Now, the traditional menu has not gone away. You can see here, this is the list of panel layouts that are available, and at the very bottom here is traditional. And if I just tap on that and agree to the fact it's going to reset my default uh, desktop, there it is, it's Ubuntu Mate from the past uh, applications and places and system is restored, but you'll see as I, I'm tapping the super key, there's nothing happening. Now, what we've also put a good deal of effort into is trying to make more faithful representations of the uh, layouts that represent or mimic popular operating systems. So the, 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 the ones that get the most attention is we have one here called Cupertino. I'll switch to that now. Um, this is more or less a representation of the Mac OS environment. If I come down to the bottom here, you'll see I have a panel, uh, just a, a panel, a dock, uh, and you'll see I have a single menu bar at the top, but this time when I press the super key, I get this overlay dash style launcher uh, for launching my applications rather than that pull down menu. And if you've used a Mac, that's not an accurate representation of how a Mac works, but it's slightly closer than the, the pull-down menu style. Uh, another layout that uh, uh, gets a lot of attention is Redmond, and this is designed to mimic a Windows-style setup. So, and as you can see, this has a single layout, at the uh, single panel at the bottom of the screen. You have quick launchers for hiding everything to the desktop, uh, launches for the Firefox and uh, email instead of you know Explorer and Outlook. We have a slightly different menu, still super key activated. This is the Mate menu, which was originally forked from the Mint menu some years ago. And again, super key activated, and then you can start searching to find what you want to do. Uh, and then the indicators and date time are in usual places you'd expect to find them on a on a sort of a classic Windows system. And then the layout that's had the most amount of work in recent times is uh, Mutiny, which is inspired by the uh, desktop layout from uh, Unity 7 that had featured in um, Ubuntu for about the last six years. So I've just switched and you'll see some interesting characteristics. So there's now a dock launcher down the left side of the screen, just as you would expect to find in Unity. And you can also see that there's um, a global menu here. So if I open the file manager, you can see here are the, uh, the menus for the file manager globally. But also something that's a subtlety that's new in 1804 is as we maximize these windows, you'll notice the window controls uh, absorb into the top panel. So you can maximize the amount of um, screen space available to your application because that those window controls are removed from the window. And again, um, we have this overlay uh, launcher in the Mutiny layout. Again, that's a, a more dash-like as you would have expected to find and, and more similar to what you see in GNOME 3 today as well. Uh, and then we have another feature here where You'll see that Firefox is the first application in the list of applications. I could launch that with Super One, and that will launch Firefox. And then if I wanted to open LibreWriter, I can open that with Super Two. Oh, I've got an unrecovered um, document there. I wonder what I was working on. Let's just let that launch. And then uh, I can then use that to switch between them as well. So if I do Super 1 or Super 2 again now, because I've minimized the document reader, that will bring that to the foreground. And now Super 1 will bring Firefox to the foreground. So it's a switcher and a launcher. And those key combinations will be familiar to anyone that's used um, Unity 7 before. We've also made one last change to one of the layouts, which is the netbook layout. Um, I'm not so sure that there are that many netbooks that are in use these days. I know there are some, um, but this layout is really for people who really want to maximize the, uh, the amount of space that they've got available on their computers. So you'll notice again, like, um, like the Mutiny layout, as I maximize uh, uh, here, the controls go up into the panel and we have a very, a very small application switcher in the top panel. Uh, and then we also have the brisk menu again, but in its menu configuration. So this is great for people that really want to make the most of the vertical resolution on their displays.
So another feature that we've been working on for a while, uh, just over a year and a half in fact, is an implementation of the head-up display that um, Unity 7 introduced. Uh, and this is a mechanism to search through the menus of applications. Uh, now I'm going to start the file manager uh, by launching it here. And you'll see that I've got the global menus. And if I press the Alt key, I'm just going to tap Alt, you'll see this overlay appears. It says HUD. And you can see that the text here represents what's in the menu. So now I can start searching by typing. So I wanted the preferences. I just typed PRE. And now I hit Enter. And that activates that menu item. Now, within the file manager, that's not um, particularly useful because it doesn't have all that many options. But where this feature really comes into its own is if you're using something like GIMP, the graphics editor, which has lots of filters and they're scattered around the menus and sometimes it's difficult to find if you're hunting through the menus by hand. But using this mechanism, you can you know, search and find what you want through a text query um, very quickly and activate the item that you're looking for. So really good for complex applications like GIMP and Audacity. Um, I find that particularly useful when I'm using the Audacity um, uh, audio editor for preparing podcasts and what have you. Um, the HUD is also a multi-toolkit implementation, so you'll find that that will work in uh, the GTK applications, which is what Mate is constructed from, uh, and then the Qt applications, so things like uh, VLC. In fact, let's just spark up VLC now, uh, and we'll look for... Oops, that was the wrong button. That would do media something. There's lots of media options. I want something information about the media, and there we go. I've got two entries presented. I can look at the codec information or the media information. Neither of those will do anything right now. I don't have a video open, but I was able to find what I wanted very, very quickly. So I mentioned earlier that um, Welcome has some documentation in it, which it does. If I start up Welcome again, uh, you'll find there's an introduction here. This is an introduction to Mate itself, Ubuntu Mate, and the Ubuntu project. There's also a breakdown of the features, you know, what are the things that make this thing up? Uh, so this is all introductory information. Uh, useful if, if, you're, if, if you're introducing somebody to Ubuntu or Linux for the first time, this is something that they can re read. Uh, hopefully it uses language that they will understand and draws comparisons to things that they'll understand. Um, but in addition to the documentation that exists here, what we also have is the Ubuntu Mate guide. So I've just searched for guide in the launcher and you can find it here, it's the big question mark. And if I fire that up, this is a fairly exhaustive uh, document that describes how to use and configure every application that we ship by default in Ubuntu Mate. So not just the components that make up the suite of tools that define the desktop environment itself, but everything else we bundle along, and including uh, things like, like how to use uh, Ubuntu Mate Tweak uh, and, and use it to its full uh, potential. You'll also find that we have um, a shop mentioned here in, in Welcome, and the only reason I'm bringing that up now is that uh, one of the features in the shop is uh, we have two books available. So again, if you're helping somebody uh, on their journey uh, to Ubuntu or Linux. Um, there's also a couple of books here specifically for Ubuntu Mate. One helping them come from another platform to Ubuntu Mate and another one that goes into even more detail about um, using Ubuntu Mate and the applications that it comes with. Earlier on I also mentioned how Ubuntu Mate Welcome was the old version. That must sound very disappointing to anyone installing a new operating system. Um, what we've done though is we've packaged uh, Ubuntu Mate Welcome and the Software Boutique as snaps. And snap packages are a way for software developers to deliver always fresh applications on top of a stable LTS operating system. So what we're going to be doing is whilst the operating system itself is going to be security maintained and bug fixed over its uh, lifetime, Ubuntu Mate Welcome and the Software 
boutique make up a central part of the unique selling point of Ubuntu Mate. And we're going to be making some uh, uh, really big changes in the way that these uh, applications, applications are presented, how they work and the features that they expose. And as Ubuntu Mate users, you will automatically receive those updates as we deliver them. They will just be over the air updates and new features will be presented in these applications. So whilst this is the last version from six months ago, you can expect to see over the coming months some exciting changes in both those applications. So I hope you've enjoyed that little preview of uh, what's new and interesting in Ubuntu Mate 18.04. Um, if you've got uh, uh, any feedback or you need some help, then again, Ubuntu Mate Welcome has uh, a few links here. Uh, one to our community, which is uh, a discourse forum, uh, and there are hundreds of helpful people here. Here's the, here's the site here, active discussions going on here all the time. So if you are wanting some additional help, that's definitely the place to go to, uh, to get that. If... Um, you want to contribute to the project then you'll find here a link to get involved uh, and that will explain different ways to participate in the project from uh, a developmental point of view or uh, contributing translations or working in QA and testing. Um, and then we also have uh, a link in the get involved section to the, uh, the bug tracker. So if you find bugs in the project please 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 file a bug uh, on the bug tracker um, that's always useful information for us uh, and very valuable for inf improving the project. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, I, I w wish you uh, good luck on your journey with Ubuntu Mate 1804. And if you try it and it's not for you, good news. All of the other Ubuntu flavours are really high quality for this 1804 release and there's plenty of variety out there. So if Ubuntu Mate is not for you, then fine. Go and try one of the other flavours and see how that suits you. You might just find that one, one, one of those is a perfect match for you.